You're listening to Racing Future Radio. Here's your host, Mr. Dennis Mills, with this week's guest, Mr. John Snowman. Well, that leads me to question about your role in uh, stimulating the breeding side of the business here in Ontario. What, how do you see your role and what do you think you can do to sort of re uh, engineer and re-stimulate uh, that being a, a part of the business that people want to get into. Yeah, you know, I, I, I've bred horses for a long time, and, and I, I recognize that that's pretty much a disease <laughs> that uh, there's no cure for. You know, when you've raised horses, you just want to, you, you always live in the hope of raising a better one You the keep next hoping, year. Yeah. you keep hoping. <laughs> Somebody told me once that nobody with a good yearling in the barn ever committed suicide. And I think there's some <laughs> truth to that. So so th- there's a bit of insanity in the breeding business just because those of us who are in it are crazy. You go yeah. down to your barn or your paddock and you say, this could be the one. Right. This could- <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And you try to explain that to your spouse. But anyway, that's... Uh, and your accountant. But anyway. I've given up. I yeah. never could. <laughs> so... so um, Lots of different jurisdictions and different kinds of uh, uh, equine events promote breeding differently. In Ontario, we've had a, a really successful horse improvement program for a lot of years. There's two things about that program I'd like to see changed. First, it's never been an industry-led program, and it needs to be. So, uh, you know, part of my job is to get is to do industry development, and that means getting this business in the hands of the industry. And they need to be making the decisions directly on what will work to promote breeding. And, uh, you know, we've done more of that in the last year than, than we have before. But we need to take a giant leap forward. The people who are in the business know best how to incent breeders and breeding. We need to make sure that we're incenting the right quality because the, the higher quality in this business, the better it is for everybody in terms of the product that we have and also in terms of the sustainability for the breeders. So um, we'll be trying to incent quality first, and we'll be trying to make sure that the business itself uh, has a say and has the say, really, in how these breeding incentive programs work. Everybody wants the same thing. They want a great yearling that can go to a, go to a sale anywhere in the world and, and uh, command a high price. But uh, will you make sure that there is incentive for those people who have breeding infrastructure in Ontario. I mean, it's no secret in the last few years, there has been a a very large number of our uh, breeders that have shipped their mares to Kentucky uh, to breed. And uh, the benefit of that doesn't really help the Ontario breeder because it's, uh, you know, it's a population in Kentucky is a totally different uh, horse population in Ontario. And so, you know, I mean, there was a time when uh, we go back to Northern Dancer when we had all kinds of uh, capacity here and quality that no one would refute. Uh, we seem to be lacking in confidence right now uh, as to whether or not we can breed the great horses here. Well, you know, uh, part of that is, in, you know, um, first I'll give you my opinion, but you got to know that when I say I want the industry to run this thing, it's because I don't want to run it. And I don't want my opinion to be dominant here because, you know, there's been too much of that. I think that we need to look at the folks who actually are investing and, and uh, kind of ask them what they need to do. You're right. If you look back in the history of, of, of horse breeding, it's always been around uh, benefactors who, who uh, you know, Mr. Taylor's name comes up always, but, but, you know, lots of folks in Ontario who who shared with him a vision of great racehorses and have made the investment and made the investment in Ontario to have that happen. Winfield is a, an amazing story. You know? The Gardeners, the Samuels, as yeah, you mentioned absolutely. earlier. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, those folks are important for us, and we have another generation of investors coming. I think it's going to be a different investor than we've had in the past just because of the way the, the way we're changing culturally. But we need to have, we need to attract investors into this industry. To, uh, we'll breed and have a long-term outlook. You know, breeding is a lifetime game. It's not a, it's not a two-year investment. It's a lifetime investment. So we have to do a, a better job of attracting those folks. But part of, uh, one of the things that concerns me is that our quarter horse and, and standard bred industries where they can use ship semen are a little different than, than the thoroughbred industry where we still have live cover and, and likely always will. It means that the stallion business in the marketplace matters, uh, that there's an incentive economically to have a robust stallion business in the province. And so its breeding incentives need to be a little bit different to keep that quality of horse available. At the same time, we don't want to, I don't think, now I sound like a politician at the same time. There you go. We don't want to, we don't want to bar mares 
coming into our province, and we don't want to bar mares leaving the province if we can get the genetics and the and the bloodlines to improve. So, you know, as a horseman, I kind of want to see everybody breed better horses. And I know that that long term, the stability of our industry will be based on us building great horses, not uh, not breeding kind of mediocre horses. So, we want the right mix of great stallions here that can support a broodmare band in this in, in the province, but also enough blood coming back and forth from other jurisdictions and other great horses to make sure that we're current, and make sure our bloodlines are current, make sure that we're the best in the world. Could you incentivize stallions to come and stand here in Ontario? I think it's one of the things that could be done, but I, again, I just really emphasize, I think that the case of thoroughbreds, they're well represented. You know, Glenn and I talk a lot. There's a lot of smart people in that business who I think can figure out how to incent it properly. But the government has a role to play. We need to put some dollars out there and we need to help that industry because it's uh, it's an important, I mean, you talk about economic drivers, it's huge. Yes. Well, I think of a fellow like John Burness at Colebrook Farms here in Ontario who's made uh, a phenomenal investment. He's uh, not to mention uh, Frank Stronach, of course. He's in all, th- you know, he's in Kentucky as well. But these, uh, Michael Byrne has got an operation here, uh, the, the the Samuels farm. I mean, these people. Uh, I'd hate to see them uh, sort of put at risk because inadvertently there was something that incentivized horses to go to Kentucky. Right. You want to maintain that core investment. Really, what we want to do is make sure that the people who support those Ontario-based stallions have an incentive to continue breeding. That's the game plan. And also to increase their mare power uh, over time. You know, and I think that along with all those great folks um, who've made major investments, there's a right behind them, a whole lot of folks who've got maybe, you know, half a dozen broodmares who are trying to increase the bloodlines and the value of their broodmares over time. And, you know, that's a, that's the core group that support the, uh, the stallion owners. So keeping, uh, incenting, Breeding quality horses is what we need to do. We need to do that with the industry, and we need to make sure that we make decisions in concert with the industry, not against them. Uh, John, thank you so much for your uh, support, your dedication, and uh, good luck. Keep it going. Hope to have you back soon. All right. Enjoyed it. Thank you. You've been listening to Racing Future Radio with your host, Mr. Dennis Mills. This week's guest was Mr. John Snowblin.